After weeks of Houthi rebels targeting drones and missiles at cargo ships in the Red Sea, the US and UK, on behalf of a coalition of nations, hit Houthi targets in Yemen. The Prime Minister, who convened his cabinet late last night, gave this update. Well, over the last month, we've seen a significant increase in the number of Houthi attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. That's putting innocent lives at risk. It's disrupting the global economy. Uh, and it's also uh, destabilizing the region. Uh, and in that time, we've also seen the single biggest attack on a Navy warship, a British Navy warship that we've seen in decades. Now, it's clear that that type of behavior can't carry on. That's why we join with allies in issuing very public condemnation of this behaviour. And it's why I made the decision with allies to take what I believe to be necessary, proportionate and targeted action against military targets to degrade and disrupt Houthi capability. We won't hesitate to protect lives and ensure the safety of commercial shipping. The Houthis are targeting any ship under the flag of any country they see as supportive of Israel, not necessarily just supportive of Israeli military action in Gaza, but supportive even broadly of the state of Israel existing at all. The Houthi, Houthi strikes not only obviously hurt cargo ships, but also your pocket. The cost of goods and oil in particular passing through the Red Sea and into the Suez Canal is rocketing as ships reroute around Africa. Not good at a time when inflation here is just about being tamed. Do you support Britain intervening like this? Is this not exactly the right thing to do to help protect, in a relatively direct way, your own wallet? Or is this another Middle East conflict which we enter with one aim, but inevitably broadens, deepens and draws us further in? 0345 973 Is Britain right to strike? John Rees is the national officer at the Stop the War Coalition. Thanks for coming on, Mr Rees. Is Britain right to strike in this regard? No, and I think that many people listening to those clips from the Prime Minister talking about protecting innocent lives will be, frankly, reaching for the sick bucket when 23,000 people have been killed in Gaza, half of them women and children. If that language about illegal acts, about unnecessary force, about the loss of innocent life were used at all, ever, by the British government about what the Israelis are doing in Gaza, then perhaps we'd be listening. But until that happens, I don't think so. So you... You don't support Britain's military action to protect um, shipping lanes, international shipping lanes, because Britain won't call what Israel is doing in Gaza illegal. I, I think that the Houthis' action is aimed at stopping a genocide in uh, Gaza. I think the British should be doing the same thing. And I think that it's... Do you support what the Houthis are doing? Uh, no, I, what I support is any action which stops a genocide. That's, that is a... a uh, international requirement under law. I think the Houthis are acting well, there's a within, case going in within the courts, that frame. There's a case in the courts at the moment, as you know, about trying to work out whether indeed it is genocide. Um, yes, I think that most of the, well, people looking at the conditions for genocide, about intent, about numbers lost, about the Well, let's wait and see what the court concludes. Structure. But until then, do you believe that the Houthis... W Action I think is trying to prevent a genocide. To follow, I think people are finding it difficult to follow that case in The Hague, though, because both the BBC and Sky broadcast the Israelis' defence, but did not yesterday broadcast the. Well, South John, people African can find it if they wish to. Um, and now, we're we now, we now <laughs> oh, seem to be talking on, about the BBC on, and Sky on, covering the international. Come on, you can find anything if you want to. Well, quite. The point is about whether or not broadcasters like yourselves and others have a responsibility to give both sides of that case and hmm. manifestly there was a gross violation of journalistic neutrality in broadcasting only one side of that case well, i'm yesterday. sure you will put that to the bbc um, i have done in in uh in judging whether or not people are right to carry out that the actions that they are do you believe that the houthis are right to be doing what they're doing in the name of preventing what you say is a genocide in gaza well, I don't think it's really the uh, the British state's business to, to lecture the Houthis. Yemen, as perhaps your listeners will know, was a British colony. The British had to be uh, driven out of there. The British have been backing a eight-year war by the Saudis against Yemen, which has just now resulted in a truce. Um, mm -hmm. I really don't think that it's the business of this country to go back to bomb a former colony after it's already been paying for a war against it for eight years. Nobody in the Middle East it, thinks that that is a remotely justifiable situation. Done to and protect ships, inflame, done to protect only, international trade. Uh, no, the, what the Houthis have said is that they're 
aren't targeting international trade. They're targeting uh, ships that are going to Israel because well, that's they not want true. To they haven't pressure. done. They haven't targeted well, just ships you know, that have been. Well, because you, you can know? see the ships that they've been targeting. They haven't no, just well, targeted ships that are just going yes. to Israel. They've well, been targeting they, a whole. Excuse me, history. They've been targeting a wide range of ships actually under flags of countries that they believe are supportive of Israel. So I have to ask you again. Yes, so, so do you think? Hang on a sec, is, Mr. Reese. Let me ask the question. Do you think what the Houthis are doing is right? Uh, in trying to employ economic sanctions of the kind that this country employs against Iran or Russia when it wants to alter that state's behaviour, yes, I do believe that they're justified in doing that because they're trying to stop a genocide. You keep avoiding this question. You keep avoiding the fact that there are 23,000 dead people in Gaza and that that is at the centre of this and all this business about trade. If people were as concerned about the loss of life as they are about the loss of trade, perhaps we'd be further forward in this debate. Thank you for your time. I'm John Rees, National Officer at Stop the War. 11 minutes past four. Sir Michael Fallon was the UK's Defence Secretary between 2014 and 2017, former Conservative MP for Darlington and Sevenoaks. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme. I, I think I know the answer to this. You are going to believe that Britain is right to strike. Yes, and what Britain is trying to do, by the way, is to stop the war. There's been a war going on in the Red Sea for weeks now. We've had drones and missiles fired at international shipping, not just Israeli shipping, but British shipping, other shipping uh, goods that are carried between the uh, the Far East and India and, and Europe. This is Europe's trade that is being attacked, and uh, we need to stop it. And, um, you know, it would have been far worse if the Allies had done absolutely nothing about this. They've warned the Houthis. The Houthis have been warned again and again, and now I'm, I'm you know, very relieved that finally they've taken action. How long is this action going to have to last for, given uh, the Houthis are backed by Iran and have quite a large stockpile of weapons? Well, this is more than a warning. Obviously, these are strikes now on some of the key military uh, targets, some of the military installations from which these weapons have been fired at shipping. So hopefully the Houthis will now rethink fairly fairly rapidly about what they're up against. They're up against not just uh, RAF uh, jets, but they are up against uh, American uh, uh, American warships as well, and other allies are coming in to protect their own shipping. Some 12 allies together warned the Houthis to stop attacking the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the Houthis don't heed that warning, then of course there's going to be more, more and more military consequences. Are the Houthis terrorists? Uh, they're carrying out terrorist action at the moment against uh, shipping in the Red Sea, yes. But they're not necessarily a, a British government prescribed terrorist organisation? Uh, the I don't think the how they're prescribed and how they're described actually matters at the moment. What matters is what they've been doing. And they've mounted over 25 attacks on international shipping in the Red mm -hmm. Sea over the last few weeks. They've been warned to stop it. They failed to heed those warnings. They were warned of the consequences if they persisted. And you saw those consequences in the early hours of this morning. You heard from Mr. Rees there of, of Stop the War, that in a sense the UK is doing this, I guess he would argue, on Israel's behalf, given that what he thinks the Houthis are right to do is to try and stop a genocide. Your thoughts on that? Well, you're not, you don't stop a genocide by attacking other ships in, in the Red Sea. Um, he ref I think your spokesman referred to it as, um, as, as an spokesman. economic... Well, the spokesman you just had on referred to it somehow as an economic sanction. The, these are drones and missiles that they've been using. These are armed, armed men they've been putting on to, to seize uh, ships and, and tankers. So this isn't uh, an economic sanction. These are uh, acts of terrorism, acts of war against international shipping in the Red Sea. And let's be very clear about this. Europe's trade depends on access through the Red Sea and the Suez mm. Canal. And we can't have that trade route completely blocked now by Houthi terrorism. You talk about the idea of stopping a genocide that this won't stop a genocide. Is that to suggest that your view of what Israel is doing in Gaza is that it is a genocide? Certainly it... not. I think it's uh, entirely a matter now for, for the court. There's a court case going on at the International Court. You've referred to it at The Hague. Um, and that uh, that court will, will rule in due course whether this falls under the internationally accepted definition of genocide. Now, I think the government's right, you know, to call for a, a, a halt to, to the fighting, to call for... Um, a more permanent ceasefire to urge Israel to use force that is proportionate and necessary. 
And uh, I was very pleased to see the Foreign Secretary and the Prime Minister use those same words about our missile strikes uh, this morning, that uh, wherever possible, this kind of military action should be not just legal, but also proportionate and necessary, not indiscriminate. That being said, just finally, we could be here for some time if the argument from the Houthis is we keep doing this unless and until there is a ceasefire. Um, who knows if that's going to happen? Britain could be firing at sites in Yemen for some time to come. Well, we won't be, uh, if that happens, so we won't be alone in doing that. This is an allied action under international law, the right to self defence. Um, and you will find Britain alongside the United States, alongside other European countries, uh, alongside Australia and Canada and Japan, all countries that have joined in this coalition not and China. have warned the Houthis. Not China, but um, a lot of other countries have joined in and warned the Houthis that they cannot block an international waterway in this fashion. And uh, if it's necessary for further strikes, then we should be prepared to carry those out.